Diana from Adirondack Girl at Heart. Today I wanted to share with you some of my vintage finds from this past weekend. My sweet husband and I hit a few garage sales and then popped into Salvation Army, our first visit since the pandemic started. So the first set of finds that I want to show you came from one sale. It was run by someone who I think was an antique dealer at some point, but his prices were really I paid $6 for everything that you're gonna see right now in the beginning of the video. So one of my favorite finds from that sale are these two little Hoosier jars, the beautiful ribbing here. Um, these sell in the range of 10 to $12 each. I also got a button hook which I have a, an entire blog post devoted to button hooks, so you can check that out. Um, I believe this is a, a celluloid handle, um, not Bakelite, but I will be testing it later. I picked up this Aqua Old Bottle Burnett's Standard Flavoring Extracts. These, um, I, t I like to sell these usually in sets of three for 12 to $15. I'm gonna research this one. I don't think it's anything really special, but it was in really good shape, so I picked that up. Um, the button hook is probably worth 12 to $15, maybe a little bit more. I'll, I'll have to check that one out too. I picked up this alarm clock which has definitely seen better days the face is bulging out but um it's just a wonderful typography and i have a lot of alarm clocks that i decorate with over and over again so i threw that into the box got this wonderful photograph of this little toddler with boxing gloves i just thought that was really cool not sure what i'm going to do with that um but had to take it i got another little golden book this one dr dan the bandage man i showed a book recently a little golden book nurse nancy both of these come came with band-aids on the inside if you have these band-aids then these books are are a lot more valuable than without i will remind you that one of the ways to check first edition is first look at the copyright page here it's copyrighted 1950 when there's only one date that's a sign that it could be a uh, a first edition if you have two dates then you know it's not a first edition two or more dates and then with little golden books many of the early ones on the back have a letter written right on the last page near the spine usually it's in the spine it's a little tricky to see this one is really visible a means first edition I'm not sure how how much this is worth I'll have to do a little bit of research but it's in pretty good shape a little warped a little bit warped but other than that decent shape i picked up two other books from that sale this one is entitled bitters bottles it's a, a bottle collecting book with these really nice illustrations a bottle collector a bitters bottle collector will really love this it dates 1965 and um, I'm gonna guess like anywhere from $10 on up. If it's really rare and they love it, then it could be even higher, but I'll report back. And I picked up this book. I actually have a copy of this that I'm reading right now. It's called Saratoga, which I live 45 minutes away from Saratoga. And it has some really wonderful illustrations in it, along with the history of the, of the city. And local historical books like this, local to you, wherever your shop is, tend to do very, very well. I 
will probably price this in the $25 range. Next, I have a handful of vintage and antique rulers. They tend to sell well for me, especially the advertising ones. I will probably price this one in the four to six dollar range. Here's another nice one, not advertising, but a little bit different with the different metrics on it. This is another, uh, just a plain one. And this is Bob's Bookshop with the five digit phone number over here. I just, I just love this little one. And this one also, I think both the six inch ones would make great additions to some kind of uh, vintage project. So the last couple things from that sale are this swank jewelry box. I have a lot of swank um, cufflinks and tie tacks that I'm selling right now. And then a few little paper bits. This is from a baseball glove. People like to use these for different art projects. I like to use them. I'm not sure if I'll use them or sell them, but so that was really good uh, buy for $6, right? Okay, the next thing I want to show you is a little box full from another garage sale. So this box full was $3. So I picked up a little cloche. This darling basket in really nice shape that I'm looking forward to doing some research on. Got a little packet of tins with Peter Rabbit on them. A pair of little wooden spoons. I like to put these in little jam jars or bowls and sell them that way. And then the last thing is new but so adorable, these little rabbits in this little Easter basket. I could not pass that up. I just think that's cute as can be. Oh, no, that's not the last thing. The last thing is this sweet little um, bowl. This is called Bird Toile. A really nice little trinket dish, perfect for, for rings, that sort of thing. So that was $3. The rest of the finds came from the other couple of sales that I um, went to, including this broom, $2. I am pretty sure I'm not going to sell it. I have an accidental collection of these brooms, but if I were, I would put $15 to $18 on that. I picked up this tool painted, I would call this a glove box, but it's not really that old. Um, <clears throat> I will put this in my antique booth and sell it for probably 15 to $20. This came out of a free box. It's from uh, Mexico, made in Mexico. It has a little spot on it that I'm going to clean, but I just thought that was really beautiful. I picked up some crafting supplies, three small clipboards. I have a, a vintage inspired clipboard project on my blog that I will be using these for and selling at the Shaker Christmas craft show at the end of the year. Some peat pots also for a project. Picked up these white folder labels because I'm running out of price tags and so I will cut these into pieces and I will use these. Out of an, another free box, I got a shoebox container with the, the lid and a number of these plastic boxes that I think will be great for shipping jewelry. That was super cool that it was free. And I'm looking to see what else I have. Last two items are this purse, which I really, really liked this, but once I got it home, I was like, oh, is that kind of old lady? You have to let me know. It was $4. And 
my final buy, this was from, oh, nope, not my final, my almost final. This wreath I got to use as a focal point in my booth. I have a, a green door that you see as you walk in and I hang things from it and the red looks really great against that door. I'm actually decided to keep this door, this wreath, um, but I had a, a red berry wreath that I was ready to part with, so I brought that up. This was $4, did I mention that? That was Salvation Army. <clears throat> And my last buys from Salvation Army were a bunch of books. They have lowered their prices in my area and children's books are four for a dollar, which is pretty terrific, I think. Got the Brownie song book. I'm gonna list that on eBay. I may bundle it with a few other Brownie um, pieces that I have, which is the best place. Nice vintage book that will go up to my shop. I have a blog post about collecting little golden books and I have a price guide in my members only library that you can get access to whenever you subscribe to my blog. And I bought this so that I could add that into the blog post and the price guide. This is a, a, a new one based on a new golden, little golden book based on an old one. The little fellow that will go up to my antique shop and it's really if this was in good shape this would be a great seller on etsy or ebay but i'm going to use the illustrations on the inside for some christmas craft projects and that's my vintage vines for today. I hope you enjoyed seeing them and I wish you happy hunting.